You're listening to the Reflective Teacher Podcast, and this is episode number eight. I'm Selena Woodward, and I'm an English and drama teacher, university lecturer, and with edufolios.org, a big time reflective practitioner. So how can reflective practice help you grow your teaching skills, fall in love with your profession all over again, and help you nail accreditation and teacher registration with less stress and less work? Well, this is the Reflective Teacher Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Today, we have a really special treat. For the first time, we have a guest on the Reflective Teacher Podcast. And in today's episode, which I know is a little longer than usual, trust me, it will be worth it. Because in today's episode, I am talking to Professor Eddie Blass about her work around the inventorium, which is solving a massive problem for us. As a high school teacher, we know and understand some of the issues we face in retaining young people and helping them leave school with a qualification. Well, Eddie's work is all about overhauling the curriculum, making sure that we are hitting standard one and we are meeting our students where they're at with what they need. We are engaging them and making sure they love learning and are successful. This is a really exciting interview and I'm really looking forward to sharing with you this conversation. I'm going to open this without any further delay. I've just asked Eddie why on earth she has spent the time she has creating the inventorium in the first place. Enjoy. We created it the way we did because the um, so the government has just confirmed the um, statistics for 2017 um, that if you take a longitudinal study of those kids that started year eight and completed year 12, yeah. only 52% made it through that whole journey. Wow. So that means 48% of kids have dropped out of high school without completing. Wow, that's half of the population pretty much. That's yeah. shocking. But that's you're pretty really much shocking. looking at every two-child family, one out of two isn't going to make it. That's given me shivers down my spine. That's just made me feel. I mean, teachers, we're all here, right, to make an impact and make a difference. And I think everyone listening to that statistic would have had that same moment of, I don't know, I just had a shiver go down my spine. It was horrible. You know, um, yeah. you know. Well, what- and, and so we, we came at it from the point of view exactly as you, right? Teachers love to teach. They want to help educate people. They're there to help people learn. So, you know, we've always said from the start, this is not about teachers and schools. Mm. This is about the curriculum and the system. Okay. Um, and so we set out to look at why those kids are dropping out of school uh, and what's causing that disengagement. But we also married that up with all the research on the future of work and what it was the employers were saying they were needing. Okay. okay. And we developed a curriculum to fill that gap. Right. Now, interestingly, all the future of work stuff says that in the future, qualifications won't be important. So the first iteration of the inventorium just had like mini micro-credential certificates for different areas of skills. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then when we piloted the sort of first iteration, we discovered actually today, qualifications are very important. Yeah, we're not in the future just yet, sadly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so we then went back and and filled gaps and mapped the whole of the curriculum to SAFE. Right, okay. And, and to VCAL. So we've got Victoria, South Australia and Northern Territory covered Great. at the moment. So you've basically um, created a curriculum that's an alternative curriculum to meet the needs of those nearly 50% of students who are walking away with nothing. Yeah. But in doing so, you are also managing to use the inventorium to re-engage them with the current norms around qualifications. That's really powerful. Yeah. Yeah, and so we never actually set out to um, be an alternative safe provision, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. We just kind of have gone there as a stepping stone on the way. Yeah. But, you know, the whole thing was about re-engaging kids who have disengaged from education for whatever reason yeah. so that they actually can have a future. Because, um, you know, the, the future of South Australia at the moment in terms of the population is pretty bleak. I was at an industry policy thing last week that were giving statistics as well on, you know, number of small businesses and aspiration and large employers, etc. Hmm. You kind of think, where are the jobs going to come from? Okay. 
Um, and so one of the key things that we had with the inventory is we, we've kind of taken a proxy for employability as self-employability. Uh-huh. So if, okay. if there aren't jobs about, then yeah. people who complete the inventory should be able to be self-employable. Right. And then generating more opportunities for our local economy too, which is always cool. Absolutely. And even if, you know, even if they set up a charity or you know, they just do um, voluntary work or whatever to continue the impact work that they're doing, mm. which gives them a sense of value and a sense of purpose while they you know, still seek that employment opportunity, they're at least engaging in meaningful outcomes yeah. rather than sitting at home watching Netflix. <laughs> what, what do you mean? What's wrong with Netflix? I'm joking. Um, Lots of documentaries on there. <laughs> so, so you've obviously come in to solve a problem around curriculum. Um, which is obviously great because that's one of our standards is curriculum and content. But I'm curious within that, you're, you're doing something different. So you're still mapping everything back to SACE, you know, backwards by design, I guess. Yeah. So we're still meeting those requirements, um, but it is different. So is this about sequence and organization of ideas so that you can engage them in their learning? What makes yeah. your stuff different? It's completely non-linear and it's completely student-centered. Okay. So the first thing is, um, and I'll, you know, quite a few teachers have difficulty with this. I'll be really interested in feedback from your audience on this. Oh, great. Is, yeah, teachers don't get allocated subjects in the inventory. They get allocated students mm-hmm. and they take the students through the whole process. Okay. Um, and because the process, because the inventory is a process-based learning approach, there's actually very little uh, knowledge content because they go and find that. Uh, um, so okay. as I was sort of saying to, you know, some, some colleagues of mine who are science teachers because they're like, where's the science? And I said, well, so say you've got a group of kids who are really sort of fed up and, you know, they, you know the number of times I've had kids who say, oh, well, we just want to sit at home and smoke pot. And I'll say, fine, why, <laughs> okay. do, why don't you do your health project? on legalizing marijuana. Okay, yeah, get them engaged <laughs> so they can learn some facts. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, if, you, if, if that's what you want to do, but it's illegal, why don't you advocate for uh, legalization of marijuana? And then suddenly they've got to go into looking at the science behind drugs yeah. and the impact of drugs and mental health issues and physical health issues and impact on society, etc. And they actually start to then broaden out and develop their literacy, develop their science skills yeah. in, in what they're doing and so you know if somebody's got a teacher who who has previously been a science teacher you know through the conversations that they have and the kids that decide they want to work with those teachers as opposed to someone who is maybe an English teacher who would have a different group of kids want to work with them yeah um, you know they will naturally be looking at more scientifically type type questions within the broad subject areas they want to look at yeah. So you know, if they're advoc- in their health one, they might look at something like drugs. Or, uh, or, you know, if somebody's got a family member, you know, um, you know this sounds terrible, but, you know, it happens to a lot of people, um, you know, where you have teenagers who have to look after and support members of their family who are ill. Yeah. Um, then actually looking at that health issue and managing a health issue can be the uh, basis of their health project. So they actually study the the process of how something's impacting on their life wow. as part mm. of their studies. Yeah. Um, you know, climate change. Yeah. Everyone's out on strike today. Today, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, that could be an area if someone feels passionately about it, they could look at advocating for climate change or they might want to look at a specific area of it. And actually, one of the areas that we wrote in the inventory specifically for SAFE, mm. it wasn't in there beforehand, is a bit called Investigative Insights, which is the research project. Yeah, research project, they, yeah. Yeah. The exemplar we use through that is climate change, okay. and we use the Cool Australia materials, and that's a completely online resource. Awesome. So inside the inventorium, you've obviously selected some particular teaching strategies to guide the students through that process, because that would be a very different way of working to what they've been used to or what's not yeah. been working for them. Are you able to share with us some of the strategies that you've got inside? I don't know if this is driven by the technology or 
the planning and the lessons that you've developed. But, you know, so what, what, what skills yeah. and prob- how are you bringing out skills, pro- all that problem solving, that critical and creative thinking? What, what inside the Inventorium is, is scaffolding that for the students? We used Guy Claxton's um, Bodies of Knowledge as a kind of framework, and he has four habits of mind, which okay. are, I've got to remember them, imagining, um, reasoning, experimenting, and I can never remember the fourth one. I always get two out of four. But basically, they're very active um, learning uh, propositions. Yeah. And effectively, everything in the inventorium is there's a little bit that you read to sort of set the intro, maybe a paragraph. Yeah. Um, and it works really well on a mobile phone. So anybody that's reading difficulties can use a screen reader. Yeah, yeah. Um, then there's usually a video. Yeah. Um, which is a TED Talk or something that we've curated off of YouTube. Okay. Um, and there, there were a few bits of video we've made ourselves, particularly of entrepreneurs um, who've spoken to us, but, you know, that's a separate thing. Um, and then there's an activity where they reflect on, oh, yeah, that was the fourth one, it's reflecting. Hey, there we um, go, it came to us. <laughs> yeah, they, they reflect on what they've learned or thinking about from the video and how that impacts on them. So we okay. always ask a direct question where they have to go and do something or think about something or put what they've just seen into their terms to make it meaningful for them. Okay. And then, and so what are you going to do with it? Okay. And, and that's kind of the whole process of how the inventorium works. Right. And there's, there's three bits, three strands of curriculum. There's something we call the brains trust, which is stuff they do on their own. Okay. There's something called human interactions, which is all about how to interact with others. So mm. it involves them interacting with others, but not really for a specific purpose. Okay. So things like how to introduce yourself, how to put a team together, how to lead so a team. So important. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah, sort of management. Wow. Uh, okay. Those types of things. Yeah. But then the sort of central bit that really drives it all is these Courage Quest projects. Okay. Where we look at, you know, what for them is stepping outside the comfort zone is going to be courageous and then okay now have the courage to go do it and we support them through the process of doing this project to bring about change wow and how much involvement does the educator have or the teacher have in all of this teacher is the most important person in the whole process of course um, <laughs> so this does not this, yeah, we, you know, everyone sort of worries with online learning they, and, and I get why because a lot of ed tech companies are trying to use artificial intelligence bots to replace teachers and it's like, no, that's not the point. And it won't um, work because teaching yeah, is a little bit more work. than just knowing stuff, um, exactly. as we know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what, we, what the inventorium effectively does is replace the textbooks. Okay. Right. It's, it's a different way of going through a curriculum and providing a resource for the students to work through. Yeah. But, you know, they get stuck. They want to discuss things. So they also have a lot more conversations with their parents. Ah, okay. I was about to say, how do the parents get involved in this? Okay. Yeah. We'll come back to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the teacher's role becomes one really of um, discussing with their students where they're at, what they're doing, what they're having difficulties with, challenging them, just pushing them that little bit more. Yeah. Um, and keeping them on track. Yeah. Um, and it's also, you know, some some teachers use it, they'll do, so although it's individually paced and every student can work on their own thing at their own time and their projects can all be different, there is still the opportunity for the teacher to have like a whole class activity if they want. Okay. Using some of the activities and it's, you know, their choice which ones or additional activities that they can bring to it. Mm, okay, yeah. It will never be complete. <laughs> well, no. Well, I guess um, I guess they're going to have that understanding of this precise context of the students they're working with as well. And so yeah. that is incredibly valuable because obviously we need to use our spidey senses, our teacher spidey senses all the time. Um, yeah. And so I think it's great that there's room there for that. It's important. And, and at the end of each section in the inventorium, there's um, two bits where people can post up either additional readings if they find something they think other oh. people should read. Nice. Um, or videos and stuff that we can then include next time we edit that bit of curriculum. Um, yeah. But also there's a co-creation space. So if a teacher has another great activity, we really encourage them to share it. Yeah. 
so that you know it, it, sort of, it becomes a very live environment and yeah. that's actually one of the reasons we set it up as a cooperative right so that you know nobody feels that anyone else is profiting from them it's it's more of a shared ownership yeah now that's really powerful and um, do you want to explain about the co-op aspect because we haven't really talked about that i think it's in fact you were the first australian education co-op aren't you the inventory <laughs> There are schools that are co-ops, um, but that's slightly different because then it's the parents that are the members. Uh-huh. Um, so basically, a cooperative is an organisation that's owned by either its members or its employees, um, if it's a worker cooperative, but ours is a member cooperative. Yeah. And our membership consists of schools. Okay. So we have lots of different schools effectively own the inventory and cooperative. So they own the instance of the um, product that they, their um, students are using. Mm-hmm. Everybody's in the same instance. So there is also the opportunity, while you can work just within your school cohort, you can also utilize a global chat function that allows um, students to reach out to students in other schools yeah outside of outside of their location which is super powerful particularly if we're encouraging these students to change the world and they're looking for other people to get cross with i think that's brilliant i can imagine all sorts of small rebellions popping up all over australia and and the the thing that makes me happiest is that these are the kids that would otherwise be lost um and instead of being lost they are leading which is so powerful at the moment you know our early um indicators are showing that we've we've got kids in the inventorium who um were on the verge of being prosecuted for non attendance. Right, yeah, yeah. Right. And, you know, their teachers are emailing us and saying, This is unbelievable, they've logged in every day this week. Yeah. Cannot believe it. Yeah. yeah and yeah. so that the fact that it is that they can personalise it so much to them, their situation and the difference they want to make. Yeah. Well, that seems it. to be the key thing to re-engage them. That's it's not like someone's going to sit and tell them geography for an hour. That's amazing. That's really powerful stuff. I love it because it's inclusive. There's all these positive interactions. Um, it sounds very much like not only are you supporting students in your classroom, but those students are then supporting their peers wherever they are inside the inventorium and geographically to keep going and keep engaging with those activities. That's incredibly powerful. Can I just ask you to talk to us a little bit about, um, I'm going to say standard three and connections to parents. Um, You briefly mentioned that this was um, helping to create relationships between students and parents using the inventorium. I think the thing is with the inventorium is that the kids can have different conversations with the parents about what they did at school that day. Okay. Um, you know, so there's some stuff, for example, on metaphor, there's discussion on their name. One of the first things they look at is their name because you've given your name. Yes, okay. You have no choice in it. Now, some people love their name, some people mm-hmm. hate it, but actually most people haven't really thought about it because it's a given. Um, so we really get them to think about their name and where it came from and why, why did their parents choose that name for them and what was behind it and okay. you know, would they rather be another name? <laughs> you know, 80% of kids will probably stick with their name. Okay, yeah. But now they yeah. children them to stick with it so they own it as opposed to it being given to them. Yeah, yeah, okay. And I guess those connections back to mom and dad or whoever their carers are around their name uh, enables those conversations to open up. I have to be honest, though, my name, Selena, I was always told by my mom that, that I was named after the goddess of the moon. Um, and then my husband, Matt, was having a coffee with her and she told him that actually it was the name of a character in a Mills and Boons she was reading at the time. So that that's how I found out about my name. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not sure. I bet the first one, the moon goddess, was like, oh, yeah, cool, I like that name. And now that it's a Milton Boone's character, you're thinking, hmm, do I still like that Yeah, name? particularly yeah. as I'm an English teacher, I struggled with that. It made me laugh very much, though. I love the fact that my mum felt the need to make something up to make her decision a little less dodgy, which I thought was very amusing. Um, is that one of the activities inside the inventorium that um, – perhaps we could share with the listeners of the podcast. I think it would be really cool to give them something they could take away and have a go at. Yeah, and I mean, one that um, actually can work quite well um, as a sort of, sort of 
takeaway activities is we get them to look at totems and totem poles. Okay. Um, and the use of symbolism and totems and guardian angels. And if they were to have um, people, ideas, spirits, whatever, overseeing them, what would be their totem pole mm-hmm. and creating their totem pole. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that's certainly an activity that would kind of like copy out well for people to use and try out and, and just see what sort of different conversations emerge from it. Everyone creates their token pull, which is then an artistic outcome, whether they create it online, by hand, craft it together somehow as a collage or whatever. Whatever they uh, want. I guess they get to yeah. do whatever mode they want. A series of Snapchat pictures. I don't know what would be yeah. better. Yeah. <laughs> be it, it's like what would they put together as their totem pole effectively yeah, yeah. Um, and how would they then present that um, and just you know that's the sort of thing that comes into our PLP yes okay yeah going back to that per- what does PLP stand for again for our primary school personal learning plan personal learning plan absolutely and, and I know we've talked before about how PLP is that thing that teachers you know they don't really like the research project feels cumbersome and PLP big and the and- Project, the two bits of space that pretty much every teacher will tell us they hate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if you love if you love space PLP, please let us know because we love you for it. Yeah. Um, absolutely. But if I'm a primary school teacher, how relevant is this stuff? You know, down in lower primary, middle primary, and is there any lesson that we can learn from your journey with Inventorium that we might be able to apply in our teaching practices in you know primary school settings? In this idea and this space of who am I, where do I want to go? what do I want to do you know I've got a son at primary school and I hate when we do what do you want to be when you grow up in terms of what yeah. job you know that attitude to me is so far removed from what we should be doing the idea that we're looking at what impact we want to have in the world yeah. and how we're yeah. going to reshape the world around us to make that happen that's so mm. powerful Yes, and I, look, I guess I haven't really thought about taking that idea back um, down the ages to primary school, but it, I mean, it could be done. Oh, great. You, you hear know, it I first here. It could be done. <laughs> <laughs> it, it could be done. With, it's just, it's, yeah, um, I don't know. I've always worked with adults and older kids, so I haven't really mm. uh, delved into the primary area. But primary school teachers, you know, have a number have asked us to do a version mm. of primary schools. Um, I mean, you know, in time we may, somebody wants to fund it, we'll do it. Let me put it well, look, primary school uh, teachers who are listening right now, if social and intellectual development of your your primary school aged children is important, then maybe, we know it is, what a silly thing to mm. say, then, you know, maybe come and have a look at this freebie that we've got. You'll be able to download it at edufolios.org forward slash 008. Come and have a look at it and have a go. And please come and give us your feedback. Are we right, Eddie? Is that cool with you? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It sounds to me, Eddie, like you would love some primary school teachers to guide you through that uh, next yeah, stage of your business development, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm so cheeky. <laughs> and, and, and I need more high school teachers to give us feedback on what next, how to improve it next. Brilliant. Well, look, there's a call to action for everybody listening. Um, can you tell us how to come find the inventorium, how we can have a look online? Yeah, so if you go to, um, if you literally type in your URL bar, inventorium.solutions, okay. you will get a screen that allows you to sign up for a guest login. Ooh, a guest login. Excellent. And that, that lets you see, that doesn't actually let you see all the activities, it kind of lets you see the overall um, content. Yeah. Um, if people then want to have a look at activities, then email me and I can change your login. Um, but effectively, that's what we call sort of parent-teacher viewing access. You okay. get 30 days to have a look at it, play around, see what you think. Yeah. And then if people want to take membership of the cooperative, then they contact us. And then you come become an owner, a part owner of this amazing yeah, experience. Owner of it. Look, owner. I just yeah. want you to repeat again that statistic that you said earlier about students and the government and what they just reported about students in 2017. Just repeat that again for me. So, 
The number of students who completed year 12 in 2017 who had started in year 8, <laughs> however many years before, um, was 52%. 52%. So there you go. We so have 40% um, mass- of students got lost somewhere between years 8 and 12. That is not acceptable, is it, everybody? That is not okay. Um, and I do strongly believe that this starts in primary. I know they've gone from year 8, and I can see why statistically they've done that. But, you know, I, I think what you're doing is incredibly important work Um, and I can't wait to discuss this a little bit further on the Facebook Live so as a reminder you could be listening to this at any time obviously those of you out there in the universe Um, but if you come back to um, facebook.com forward slash edufolios and look for uh, 008 you will find in the future a video because I'm going to invite Eddie to come and chat with us on the Facebook Live and answer your questions on this because I just think this is both shocking that statistic is shocking I think it's incredible that you've identified that problem and that you're working so hard to solve it I think it's amazing that you have developed something that is engaging those students and doing far more than just giving the government the statistic they need to get the qualification of this is about impact in the world and about happy healthy people turning into happy happy helpful productive grown-ups which is really important to every aspect of our lives. So I just want to congratulate you, Eddie, because I think what you're doing is phenomenal. Thank you. <laughs> it's incredibly important work. Thank you so much for your time today. We, I know we all appreciate it, and we're really looking forward to talking to you some more over on the Facebook Live. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. you.